welcome nana here and then uh, now today you are going to see a very important topic in order management that is uh, transference on a gop route right on the gop route you are going to see a transference chip so we will now see about how exactly to perform that now right? so we will now see this now right? so let me go on and share it now i will tell you step by step about how it, how i did it now, right so that what happens you will understand it step by step i am going to show it to you so now <clears throat> first i will now show you how how i create the item right step by step i'm going to show you and then you can do this later but at least what happens you create a transfer order and succeed at least fine and then so creating the complete setups you can do it later also fine you can just see that. i go to the product management and then i go to the product information management and then i'm going to show you what how i did the setup section so before in the morning itself i did the setups and then i'm going to show you what how the setups have been done on the system actually i go there i will not browse the item and click on the browse items i am working on vision remember right? i am working on vision and then i go to the browse items and then i am going to query my t01 i created the first item on t01 actually t01 is an item i got the t01 and then enter in search for it it no 940 and then i hope to complete it by 11 o'clock right? one hour into 20 minutes suppose so the item has been assigned to both dogs i am going to move it from 002 to 001 and then ship it fine so the sales order is going to be made on 001 and then i will be moving it from 002 to 001 and then afterwards i will now ship it from 001 to customer actually go there i will now have a look at the item specs actually i'll now open up it is called a btp transfer we are now going to have a look at the btp transfer so the item is going to be shipped from 002 to 001 now so it needs certain attributes to be set automatically on this go there so go to the specifications I go to the specifications, and then go there. I go to the sales and order management. Line. So here, <clears throat> I go and then have a look at the sales and order management. The back-to-back -back has to be enabled. This has to be enabled whenever you are doing what buy receive and ship or transfer receive and ship or make receive and ship. If you are doing any of the three processes, then you have to have enabled back-to-back. -back. And then further, you must have a GOP license also. If you don't have a GOP license, you cannot do it. So buy, transfer, and ship. Right? Um, buy, buy, receive, and ship. Transfer, receive, and ship, and then make receive and ship cannot be done if uh, you don't have a GOP license. Right? That is one. And then since it is going to be a transfer order, the internally transferable as well as transfer order enabled must be an S. And then the item is not returnable. I will now later on make it as returnable and then show it you also. Right? The item is not as of now is not returnable. And then I will now make it returnable. And then if you go to the part, uh, what happens is the orders. So yeah, there is no purchasing involved on this. It doesn't matter. And then I will not give up. After having created the item, I have a stock on the second door. I, I kept a stock on the second door. Uh, I will not go to the stock. You go to the home and then click on the supply chain execution. On the second door, we have to have a stock of this item. Go to the supply chain execution and go to the inventory management. And then I am going to have a look at the stock in the second door. Go to the manage item quantities on the supply chain management. Now go to the manage item quantities, and then here we are going to see this number. Manage item quantities, and then here change or to zero zero two. And remember, the appropriate date access has to be given everywhere. So <clears throat> otherwise, what I'm will not be able to make a change that we have already seen. Often date access for users has to be appropriate. I'm in this place. I go there, click on it. I will not do what. Go to the manage item quantities in the house. So I will not query the item. Fine, it is a T zero one. Then give it up. I'm not going to query item. Click on some sort of fine. We coming, and then it will not show you the stock. Expand it. Expand it. Nine ninety nine. 989 is there and 11 quantities have already made the sales order has been made already and then what is and then if you go to the view availability all the items are available so, that, so available to transact and available to reserve is all okay everything is there so after having received the item on the second order what you have to do is you go and then collect that you have to perform a collection actually thank you want we'll not go to the what's called this one so in the collection process we are doing for first time i'll not tell you what exactly you do so you go to the what's called the supply chain planning supply chain planning and then go to the planning inputs now fine when you're doing it for the first time what you have to do i will tell you Supply chain planning and then plan inputs. And then click on it, and then go there. And then here you go to the what? Manage planning source systems. Manage planning source systems. And then see to it that your org are enabled. Actually, your org must be enabled for collection. And then there are so many things are there. So if you use Oracle Integration Cloud, you can even integrate with the very many source systems. Actually, now the or uh, this uh, default by default it uses OPS only. So the order management will be using OPS. And then, if you're going to go for other source systems, then you have to configure it through your this thing now. So I will now go to the query mode and then query the OPS now. Well, the OPS will let me query now. Now coming from the corner, and then go to the manage organization list. And then when you come for your first time, I want to give a refresh list and then query your all. 
So click on zero zero. And since it is a vision one, it is already enabled. Actually. It is zero zero. So master will not be enabled. Actually. Zero zero operations of master will not be enabled. The remaining chives are all enabled. Actually. So we are going to work on zero zero one and zero zero two point for that is all enabled. So it is not enabled for collections. In our case, we are going to move the material from Atlanta to Seattle now. So the both are enabled. Right? So it's a vision and so it's no problem at all. Fine. But, but we are doing it on your own or yet enabled. So after having enabled it, what you have to do is next is what? You, we were done now. Fine. Right? So we are seeing the managed planning source systems and afterwards you go there, you click on it and then you go to what? Collect planning data. And then normally what happens uh, before you start all the activities, you perform a collection. Now, right? You perform a one full collection actually. You go to the collect planning data and then perform one full collection actually. One full collection. You do. So I will do it. You go there, go to the OPS, and then make it as a targeted. And one full collection, you always keep it up. Right? Bring all the reference data over here. And then the supply planning data also, whatever you go and then bring all. Right? And then give a collection. Right? This will all run for around 20 25 minutes on a vision instance, actually. So wait for all the concurrence to complete. So one full collection on an OPS targeted, you do it both for reference as well as supply data. And then afterwards, what happens now? Item on on hand only is required. Right? Bring it in. So this time, what I'll do is, I will not go to the this I will not bring only on hand. This is on the on hand of the second hour. In the reference data, I go there. And then we have uh, 989 stock. The normal way I have 99 stock. And then the reference data, I bring everything and go there. So what you have to do is you have to collect only items. So the next time when you do it, what happens? You will not collect only items on on hand because you just created item and then you have kept on hand on the second hour. So those things only you collect on a targeted fashion. On a targeted fashion, you have to collect. So then very on targeted, OPS targeted. So it will now bring everything, whatever you done. Right? It will be running in about five to 10 minutes approximately. Otherwise, that will be running for 25 to 30 minutes. So after having done this, what happens once when the concurrence are complete, you go and then query your item in this place. Whether your item has come into the planning area or not, think about it. It is called GOP area. So whether the item has come into the GOP area, you're going to make a query. Now item has come, 001, 002. But I've all done everything in the morning itself, and so it's not coming up. So it will now take some time for it. So what you do is you first of all experiment on my item itself and then see whether you are able to complete the sales order or not. The setups you can again do later on. First, you complete complete the sales order first of all. So the plan is come. And afterwards, what happens? You have to do the three setups on the GOP area because it's a back-to-back -back item. And so we have done three setups now. Thank you, Mark. We'll now perform the three setups. <coughs> go there. I will not go to the order management. GOP is basically order management is below GOP. Fine, it is ultra actually. Uh, is the below order management GOP is coming? So below GOP order management is there. Fine. So click on this one. Click on the order GOP. So in the GOP area, we are going to uh, perform three setups for the back to back. Whether it is going to be back to back by transfer or make, we have to perform all the three setups. I will not go on and do it now. Fine, that. So click on the manage ATP rules and then go there. Here I have now created on the ATP. <clears throat> it is called supply chain ATP. Fine. We have now previously seen an infinite ATP. Fine. Now we are going to make a supply chain. So I done it for both the also. I will also select the, the name is same one assigned to do different also. That is why it's not coming. The name is same. If I click on it. So what I did is I am going to balance the supply chain. So these are all the supplies which are going to be balanced against these demands. This supplies will be balanced against these demands. And then you use the user defined time once user defined time and then 50, 50, 50. This will be fully explained on a planning center training. So once when you attend it, it will be you will be understanding it. So <clears throat> I don't know when I am going to connect it. At the time, whatever I'll be explaining completely about all these things. Now, fine. This is mainly for planning center lecture. So and it should not be infinite based and then lead time based. It must be supply chain availability search. It must be on this now. Fine. The radio button must be on this. Fine. So create everything. Thank for that. So this is the setup. So you have to make it. And then afterwards you go to the ATP rule assignments and then assign it to both the orgs. So I have assigned it. Uh, assignment level is what org level and then you, you whatever the orgs you are creating it, you have to do it. I'm not using vision. So vision is all fully set actually. Even though I have not done this, it is already there in some other place also. Fine. So that is why it will all work. Uh, working in vision is what is a, not a big challenge at all. Fine. It will all work because everything is fully set on the vision. Fine. Anyhow, uh, for understanding purposes, I've done everything. But even without this also, it will work because it's already fully set. So in some other one, if you go on and see, whatever you go there, delete it. And then I make a delete. Now. So if you give us cancel, now, fine. Now, fine. plenty of uh, ADP rules are now made. Long go the camera, long go on the remove it and then make a search now fine. for the vision. They've done a lot of ADP rules. Fine. Everything is now fully set actually. Fine. So uh, uh, even though I have done it, but it may even pick up from other rules also. Fine. That is the first setup you have to do. If you're doing it on your own or global. If you're doing it on your own infrastructure, you have to do it. The next one is what? You have to create two sourcing rules for this uh, transfer and ship. Fine. Go to the managed sourcing rules, you have to do it. Now. The transfer and ships, you have to do it. Now. So T01 and then enter now. <clears throat> And then go there. So one is a local. <clears throat> I'm going to make a local transfer now. If you click on it, it will be a local transfer. 
it will be a local transfer from your account so it will be a local transfer so make it as a local and then transfer from and then the owning organization is the destination or so for me 001 is a destination or you make the owning org as a destination or and then you're going to transfer from 002 to 001 right so it is a 002 allocation is 100 rank is 1 right? shipping method is not required so this much you can give so this transfer is going to tra transfer material from the 002 to 01 so make this one the first one first rule you have to make down and remember again everything is ready in vision of right? i even though i have made it but it is all ready in vision next is what go that one at ready and then you have to make one global one global for transfer now right? it is a global rule and that is a transfer is a local rule remember and the transfer from 002 to 001 is a local rule whereas this is a global rule global rule and then you going to transfer from transfer is always to customers actually on a global when you transfer it it is for customers actually. from this or i am going to transfer it to customers and not to person right so, so create these two rules right one is a global shift to customer and then one is what transfer from 002 is a local is a global so having created this fine again everything is available ready made in the mission but only for understanding purpose i did it and then if you go there and then click on fine click on it you now go there there is a what's called one profile option is there fine go to the server and make an answer then you'll be having one profile option that will be pointing to only one assignment set actually fine in the whole of the installation we can have only one assignment set fine click on it now fine for that we'll now go to the manage admin profiles manage percentage admin percentage profile percentage that is admin profile the one so go there manage administration profile go there click on it and then go there i will now see query for msp msp default percentage fine msp default msp default is the one this will now point to only one assignment set fine so for the for the vision it always points to global order forms but in case if you are creating something new we have to make a change here right? and you cannot we cannot have multiple things working simultaneously basically remember in an implementation we we'll have only one assignment set right? on the assignment set only you have to do everything right? the vision is one right? so on the global order promising i am going to assign my sourcing rules now right? so this profile is the one manage admin profiles the profile is what msp default assignment set you go there it is msp default assignment set is the one so it is now pointing to one of the profile value so this value we have to set up fine go there that the third setup on the gop is now to come so click on you know go over the third setup so first setup is what adp rules the second second setup is what uh, sourcing rules and then we go to the third setup on the on that right so i go to the again order management and then i go to what uh, i may go to global order policy i go there gop setups the third and final setup i am going to make <coughs> And then click on it. Go there. And then here, uh, what I go to, I go to the what? Manage assignment sets. So I click on the manage assignment sets. So I click on it. I will now query for global. Global and entry. It will be coming. If you go on them, search for it. What happens? There are plenty of setups that have been made for uh, demonstrating this global order promising for the customers. Okay. Uh, they have done lot and lot. So uh, yeah, everything is there. So, but for understanding purposes, I am doing it. Okay. So whatever I done, it must have already been done there now. But uh, only for our understanding, I done it. Okay, brother. So I know what the query mode. Okay, come query mode. And remember, working on vision is not a real charm at all. Right? It will all work, but that is not real. You do everything on your structure actually. I I told you, I taught you about how to create your enterprise structure. And then if you can do on your structure, that will be excellent actually. That will be a real test actually. The global. And then I have inserted this now. Right? The global. We go there. Query example. I'm doing it. Fine. I will give you a global as a sourcing role. It is global. What ship to customer? So this is the one. So I am now going to ship it to customers from my zero zero one org. Right? It is zero zero one org. I am going to so it is zero one is is going to ship from zero zero one org. And then afterwards, what I did is I went to item organization. And then one more rule I made it now that also I inserted. So it is called T zero one and then eighteen of mine. So this this also I inserted. So this is going to transfer it from zero zero two to zero zero one. This will now first of all transfer from zero zero to zero one, and then afterwards it will now ship it. We can even try to see on the view sourcing hierarchy if it is available. It will be excellent actually. Go to the view sourcing hierarchy. If I can go there, the assignment set is wrong. Organization is what I will now go on the zero zero one, and then here what about the item is what T zero one. When you tap, sometimes it doesn't come at all properly. You know, choose one of the item. Can you okay now? Right, and then the date is what today's date. <coughs> sometimes it doesn't come. If you make a search, it will show you how you are going to source it. Fine. So first of all. we are going to transfer it from 00 to 01 other at the global level we are going to ship it to the customers so these two are enabled actually right so other 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 levels of assignment is not there at all so there are plenty of ways to assign it and then uh, as and when you uh, become strong on the gop area then you will be able to do multiple things also so this is the topmost one if you see item organization the topmost one and then first time in transferring it to 001 
and then afterwards what happens i am now shipping it to customer actually so this is the way it was in some other places what happened the sourcing hierarchy itself will not be visible actually so if you see here item organization is the highest level global is the lowest level actually so it will now keep on searching on every level and then if there is any thing which matches your sales orders uh, details then that will be executed one by one after another so now here it will now execute the item organization and then afterwards finally it will now execute the global action and there are multiple things since my item is not available in the other ones and so what happens it will be uh, it is not available on, there are so many things which they have done offline since my item is not available nothing will be executed for me even though they have plenty and so many things are there my item is not available in any of these things so they will not be executed so this is how it is being done offline so this is the final one and that you have to do it the msp default assignment set is point with this in this only you have to insert okay fine it's not done then afterwards what happens you go there go to the manage carriers and then transit types so carriers also you define now so here if you go there click on it so carriers and transit types as well so click on go to the setup and maintenance and then you know, go on and see the transit types which is required for the project so click on search now we go to the it's the manage transit types manage percentage transit types i'm telling you from an implementation perspective and then i am working on vision and so here everything is fully set it will work but it has to work for you now fine that is a very important one in your structure actually for that i will not say it's the internal location so origin is what uh, i will not say atlanta atlanta is 0 to r for that one i will not select it and then the source the destination is seattle actually that is 001 this is 002 and the destination is what internal and then go and query seattle seattle and then click on search now because it will not show you from the, the, the from the source to destination either any transit times is different or not and some people will be enforcing the shipping method in which this is a must actually if the shipping set end up is not enforced fine i'll not right click on the duplicate now fine i will say if the shipping parameters does not enforce the shipping method then this is not required otherwise it will fail actually go there i will not show you the shipping parameters not fine correct now go to the setup and maintenance <clears throat> some companies enforce the shipping method now baby because there are multiple ways of shipping it and then one of them is a default method for example from bombay to madras we can even ship it from what you can even ship it from uh, by air by rail by road fine by so many ways you can do it out of which whichever is the cheapest one would have made it as a default one and then click on it now fine that will be the cheapest uh, transportation method so it now takes approximately 3 days time for the convert that is what is so dhl air next year fine this is the one this is the shipping method now the shipping the carrier has to be defined and then the transit time has to be defined and then that has been made as a default fine and so here in this place if you go there and then if you make the shipping parameters and what you want you can search now fine you go to the manage shipping parameters we are already seeing so it is a revision for you now fine manage shipping parameters for the 002 or fine from that there is a source or for us now fine so it is 002 so here if you enforce the shipping method then if you don't define this that's all even if you don't define the default also it will not work fine right? you have defined so many methods but one of them has to be default so if this is enforced then that is a must actually i am not removing it so they, for the vision they don't want to enforce all these things of that so the shipping parameters for this org is fully defined we already seen about how to put what are the release sequence rule the fixed moving rule everything and then the shipping ship confirmation rule all these things you already seen now right? so by which uh, we, have, we have completed this portion <coughs> <coughs> so if it enforces is required otherwise what happens required next is what you go there manage uh, interop parameters click on it on manage interop organization parameters and then from organization is what 002 and then the destination organization is 001 then you tap and then click on search now i'm going to search it so when we search for it i'm going to show you click on search now you're going to search it is already there and click on edit now <coughs> go there so when you want to want to move from this place to this place we have to have the in, in transit the, the transfer order required must be on so the transfer order required is not on but this is required only for your manual movement when you want to create a manual uh, transfer order then there is required otherwise for automatic one the sales order will be creating an automatic transfer order and so it will not look up at the interop parameters of because sales if this is not enabled that means what we can move the material from 00 to 201 only by in transit method Fine. If it is enabled, we can move it only by transfer order method. They are all for manual purposes. But for automatic purposes, this is not required. But when you want to move it, on order always enabled. Fine. So the advantage of transfer order is what the material gets allocated, and then you'll be having lot of shipping documents to be printed. Fine. You can even give, let's say, a commercial invoice, a copy to the driver, 
and then in between if anybody is coming they can even hand over a perform invoice to the police people who are now making a check actually fine so you can even have a bill of lading document and then vehicle load sheet plenty of and then your pick slip report everything can be printed and then handed over to the driver actually so there is a the biggest advantage of a transfer order transfer order is going to do what material allocation it will not allocate the material if the item is going to be serial lot control it is important actually some companies are using the control levels fine serial control lot control revision control locator control material status control all the five control they will use it at the time transfer order is going to allocate the material which is going to expire first in time or whatever maybe you are picking concept actually so that is the biggest advantage for a transfer order so moving via transfer order is excellent but sales order will not move only via transfer order because interop transfers are manual whereas transfer orders can be manual as well as automatic also right that it will not look at this setup because it will automatically create only transfer order so, but when you move it manually is required and the zone is required the, this is basically iot and transfer orders are mutually exclusive remember you can transfer between 00 to 01 either via iot or via transfer order they are mutually exclusive remember so there's not required so for this access we are, we are going to initiate it from sales order actually the transfers we are going to initiate from sales order so it's not done fine so this is one so the transit times and the interop parameters and this completes the basic setup for a what happens a transfer receive and then ship any questions on this not fine so this you do on your structure or otherwise on vision itself we can try on the vision itself we can now try all the things you can try now we are going to see the execution of it we are going to see the execution Okay. So one more thing is what finally we have to run this tender also. Uh, once again, after having done this, I have done this. After having done the GOP three setups, what you do is you have to again go to the planning some setups. You have to go to the what supply chain planning and then go to the planning course. After having done the three uh, what happens here GOP setups, you have to go there and then again run a collection. So first time we collected only items on one end. This time what you have to collect is what we have to collect the uh, order orchestration reference objects and then make it as a target. and then here problems you make it as what go down and then go to the reference data the reference data bring in what the order orchestration reference data. these are the three or gop setups you made that you have to bring in and then collect but everything will work when uh, you have already done a full collection because this is basically a incremental collection and so sometimes that also you always make it as what targeted since you are doing only for one you make it as a targeted and then if it really still not works because what happens sometimes there will be a dependency of this particular object with the something else also the shipping method or submit notice or something something to be dependent so in the time what happens you may have to then collect from also if it doesn't work if that single collection the order orchestration of the object doesn't work then you have to make a full collection also well see give it up so that you have to make. so there is a second collection you have to make then afterwards what happens you have to run after all these things what happens you have to run what one refresh and start so you know go to the what tools and then you go to the schedule process we have to do the refresh of your gop area gop is basically an online memory engine and so that has to be refreshed actually thank you for the comment no online it is going to do it now so keep on the uh, sir over there it is a refresh so this can kind of so you uh, for the first time again what happens whenever you are running it you have to run for all the parameters later on we can even run selectively for example now i have only created an item an item and then i have done what sourcing and then what about i have done the atp rules from that so likewise also i can collect and again if you are not very clear upon this some of them are refresh not refresh the gop area will not work fortunately from 21d they are dropping it now from 21 release which is going to be coming from 1st of october actually so in that one they say there's oracle is saying uh, that there is no more need for you to run the refresh and start it gets refreshed automatically on the gop gop engine actually so that was thing so this headache is gone similarly if the collection headache is also gone that will be excellent now i am waiting for it now right if it is gone then order management will now become very excellent actually so these are all very big headaches in the field actually you can cancel one of my students says that for the for the collections it runs more than 200 hours because he has got more than 1.5 lakh items so when you want to collect it the collection alone takes around 200 hours basically so he has to wait for it and then afterwards only he can book a sales order if the customer wants a sales order immediately so it's not working at all immediately so he wants to have a full targeted collection before he go for a sales order say so is a big pain oracle is also not responding to him now so there is no other maybe uh, the think tank may be working in the back end now fine so that they will know here so this is the last part of the setups so before you create a sales order everything is done now fine now we'll now go on and create a sales order and then afterwards what happens always you do on you always give what sign out and sign in and that is the best practice now to sign out and sign in <coughs> sign out and sign in and then that will long give you because the setups need to be the big setups as we then a sign out and sign in now i am going to demonstrate so many things on this now fine i will now open up around 78 sheets then what happens you will 
I'm going to right click on the duplicate, the second one. So similarly, whatever I'm going to open up some 78 sheets which are required for demonstrating it. Click on it. I'm going to duplicate it. I need multiple sheets for it. Right click on the duplicate. <coughs> So in every sheet, whatever they're pretty much doing, something like that. Right click on the duplicate. One, two, three, four, five. I now only one more. Number. Later on, I'll add more. So we have six sheets available. Six pages are available now. I'll now go to the first page. I will now book a sales order first. I go to the order management, and then I go to the order management. So click on the order management. Let me book a new sales order. Click on the order management. I will now open up a notepad now. Notepad. So this you do. This you do first of all, and then afterwards uh, you work on a, what's called a complete setups and then a transactions basically. Click on create order. You can now create order and then see whether you are able to succeed in this or not first of all. That is the first setup. So go there. I will not drop down the BU. BU is the first one. So since it is a vision, all the BUs are enabled for this moment. After putting the BU, you put the computer returns. Ready-made customer. Work on your BU and then work on your customer. Right? That is the best way actually. Working on uh, visions one is no challenge at all, right? Even though I've done it, that setups may all be existing there now. <laughs> so, so go to this place and then go to the P01 and the item will be coming. I have given all items price of 10 actually. I've given all items price of 10. So item will be coming up over here. So I have given all items price and then we don't have any stock at all. So that's all right. And then click on add number. I will now go for 10 quantities. I will now go for 10 quantities. And then the price is under fine. Click on add. Now, customer is asking for a discount. Fine, since he is a very good customer for us, the CSR, the customer service representative who is now dealing with the customer, is now going to give a discount. You know, saying out of stock, we don't have any stock at all in this place. So click on it. So, because of the GOP setups, it is now giving you. If you have a stock, it will also show you. Right? So, you're now going to give a discount. Fine, click on the, your price. And then go there. And then you're going to get. He is now going to give a discount percentage of 10%. And then he's saying that he's going to match it with the internet price actually. Internet, the price is only nine. So he's not matching it now. Right? Price match, he is not performing on the internet. Right? Online match, you know, performing it. And then because of which he is not given a 10% discount, and then the net price is going to be nine. Right? So the price has been given off. Right? And then in this place, there is no need for you to populate the supply at all because it is not a manual sales order, it is via GOP. So the system, the GOP will now pick up the warehouse from that place. Right? There is no need at all. Fine. When it is not a back to back is not enabled, then warehouse is a mandatory. As well as if you're going to go for a drop ship, then supplier is required and not the values. Supplier is required. If it is a drop ship, then it will be supply will be supplying the customers and then whatever they will be. The values will be required. And then click on submit by which whatever no supply is required for a B2B. B2B is all set in the GOP itself. Click on submit. All the three setups will not take care of the supply sub inventory actually. The supply values it will not become. So click on it. So you know submitting. So once you submit it, the sales order will be getting submitted. And then you can now note on the, for the 10 quantities at a price discount of over 10 percent, he has to pay only 90. 90 is the, the price he has to pay. <clears throat> so the sales order is now getting submitted. So for 97388. So I will now put 97388. I will now go there. 97388. There is one more notepad also there. I will not do the sales order. Nine seven three eight eight is the sales order. Right? So here you can see what actions and then what switch to fulfillment do. And then the sales order will be progressing on the workflow. Right? Nine seven three eight eight. So go to the fulfillment lines and then how will that work? So click on it. Now scheduling has passed. Remember, I have not given any barrows at all. So scheduling is going to say from which barrows you are going to pick up. Right? So since the GOP is now selling it, so the shading has passed. Otherwise, for a normal manu man manual sales order, back to back is no. We have to specify the supply submittery, or other the submittery from where you are going to ship it. Now the request for process orchestration has now gone. The supply supply chain orchestration has now started, and then go there, and then it has got complete loads. It has got complete loads. Supply request is complete, and then the pause is also completed, and then it has gone to awaiting shipping. Now it will be creating what. Yeah, what's called a supply orchestration request. So if you go to the fulfillment lines, you go to the fulfillment lines, you can now see the supply orchestration. So go there. You can now see the supply order number has come. It's now awaiting supply. I will know I can even click on it, otherwise, whatever I'll not go on the manually put it. I can click on it. So otherwise, whatever I'll not manually take a copy. Oh god. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. So I will not go to the next step. If you click on it, also it will not go to the supply orchestration area. Okay? Go that on it. I will not go to the supply orchestration area. Go to the supply chain execution and then go to the supply orchestration. Okay? The supply orchestration is the one which is basically a, like a adopter. One input to three outputs. No? Fine. One, one is to three. Fine. It will send it to any, any one of them, either buy or make or a transfer. The incoming demand will be fulfilled by one of the outputs. Okay? So click on it now. Go there. I will not go to the managed supply lines and then I will not put the supply order number over here. <clears throat> I take a copy of it. So the supply order number, I will not paste it over here and then give a tab. Because there's a list of value icon, so it has to match exactly fine for that to search. I'm not putting supply order number. You will not find your line which will be showing. This is the supply order number. So this is also the same thing, fine. ending in 8207 here now. You can also click on this and then do it. Otherwise, whatever we click on this place. So the supply orchestration has now created it. Right? So it has now received what is the in process and then it is now reserved also. Right? The item is now reserved first of all. So the sales order is reserved actually. The sales order is reserved. So you go there and then click on this. Buy, make, and transfer on the outputs. I will now go to the transfer and then how will it I will click on transfer. The transfer order number is created. 134049 is the transfer order. I will say 134 is the 049 is the transfer order. That is the transfer order number. So it has now performed a reservation. Right? Once when you receive it from the second R to first R, it gets reserved automatically. Yeah, right? It's all created. If you go to the execution documents, they will not show you what are the things that you know. It has not given a reservation number also. We will not go on and check the reservation here. We will not go to the place. We will not go to the supply chain execution. Then I go to the inventory management. And remember, on the destination R, it is reserved actually. It is now reserved on the destination R. If you go with that click on it. We will not go to the manage reservations. Manage reservations. Fix. It is now going to be reserved on the destination R. So I will not change the organization to what? 001 is my destination or I will not query for the item. So I will change the organization. I will again go to what? Manage reservations and picks. I will go to the manage reservations picks. And then again, organization item is what? 301. I am going to see whether any reservations are available. So we have a sales order being reserved actually. That's what it is. Now click on this one. show the sales order being reserved actually. So the transfer order is also reserved. The moment it comes from 002, nobody can touch it. It is meant only for the customer, the particular customer. So we have it expanded. So we can now see the reservations of the destination of 10 quantities are reserved actually. Nothing is picked. The demand is 10 for the customer for which whatever the reservation has been made, but we don't have any quantity at all on the destination order. So we'll expand it. And then it will show you. If, if there is any further uh, hierarchy there, then it will not show you. Otherwise, it will not show you. And then if you go to the source organization, these 10 quantities will not be reserved at all. Because the transfer order has to do the picking. Picking and uh, shipping on the source. Or source is 002. So here, if you go on and see, you will not be able to see anything on the, what's called, on the uh, thing. Again, it is not showing you the, uh, this thing. 97388 is a sales order number. 97388 of a line 111 has reserved it actually. And then not saying. So the demand is there. The entire demand has been reserved against this. Whenever, as and when the, come, the product comes in, what happens? It does. So click on that. You will now go on and have a look at the item quantities on the destination, on the source or. I mean, 001. So I will now go to the item quantities on the source or. There, no reservation will be there actually. Because the transfer order is only just created. It has just created a transfer order. 134049 is now created. But if you go there and then see on this place, you won't be finding anything at all. You don't go there. Tomorrow. I will not go to the supply chain execution and go to the inventory management. And third tab is going to go there. So click on it. I will not have a look at the item quantities. I will not go to the item quantities. So manage item quantities, I'm going to have a look at it. So I will not change it to my source. It's 002. No, fine. That is my source. Fine. Click on change the organization. I will not change it to what? 002. I'm going to go to that. And then click on OK. No, fine. No, so here, we will not query for the item. Click on it. We'll again have to go there. And then click on the item quantities. Click on it. So we'll not go there and query. Is the T01 is the item and your tap. <coughs> item is coming up. So we'll click on search. Once when you search for it, it will show you. We have got 989 quantities. If you expand it, <coughs> whatever, it will show you sub inventory organization and sub inventory also. <coughs> you keep a customer and then the view item availability. So click on the view item availability on the sub inventory. If you go on and say 989 is available, everything is totally available for transaction as well as reservation. <coughs> Nothing is reserved at all. <coughs> the entire quantity is available. Now the transfer order has to lock it actually. So we'll now go there and then go to the next tablet. We'll now go to the tablet. It is now created. Manage the reservations. Okay, I'm going on. I'll now go to some other tablet. Item gone is 
this was seen. Okay, one of them. In this tab region, the fourth tab region is the below sort of. So go there. I will not. I am in the inventory management. I will not go on that. Have a look at the transfer order. Go to the manage transfer orders. So on the fourth one, I am not going to see the manage transfer order. Okay. So if you know the transfer order number, you can query it. Otherwise, bottom one, the source is what zero zero two, and then the destination is zero zero one. So in this combination also, you can. But we know the transfer order number also. The transfer order number is what one three four zero four nine. Fine, we know it. But even then, you can even query like this. No point. Can search no point. Otherwise, one supply request number is there. We can even add a field and then query out supply request number also. We can query. So any way you can query. So it will show you all the transfer order numbers. We got only one transfer order available. No point. So this is about one three four zero four nine. And then if you click on the view shipments and receipts, it will show you how much has been shipped and how much has been received. No, it is no requested, but nothing has been shipped. Now we'll go and then we'll now pick it. No, we're going to pick it now. Go to this place. You know, go there and then pick it. So go there. You know, go to the supply chain execution. Then go to the uh, inventory management again. I will go to the fifth tab region. I go to the fifth tab region. I need some more tabs. So right click and then duplicate. <clears throat> and one more tab region. So I'm in the fifth tab region. Okay. So right click and then duplicate. I got now seven tab regions. In the fifth one, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth one, what happened? I'm going there. I will now go to the shipments of this. Okay. I'm going to that one. I'm going to uh, one pick and then ship. No. So I will now go there. Go there. I will now go to the shipments. No. Right click on shipments. And then here, I will now go to the manage shipment lines. No. Right. Manage shipment lines. No. One. I go there. And then query your transfer order number. So our transfer order number is what? In second one, one three four zero four nine is the one. Go there. Click on it. I will now go to the one three four zero nine. No. <clears throat> Where is it? Yeah. <clears throat> you don't go on that. You're gone somewhere, no? Manage shipment lines. Okay. No. So we go to the manage shipment lines. The fifth one, random knowledge. Fifth one, you go on that. So here I will now put one three four zero four nine. One three four zero four nine. So since it is going to be shipped today, it's okay. Right? It is going to be shipped today. And remember, our in transit time is three days actually. Right? So when you are querying on a sales order number today, will not work. Right? One three four for a transfer order will work. Right? Click on such one. It has to be picked and then shipped today itself on the zero zero two R. Is only on the zero zero two R. So on the zero zero two R, we have to pick and ship. So will not today. It will work actually. <clears throat> so click on such one. One three four zero four nine. One three four zero four nine. So if it doesn't work again, what happens? You make a change. So sometimes what happens? It doesn't work. Uh, you know, it's working. It took some time to work actually. It took some time. You go to actions and then go to what? Pick release. No. You go to pick actions. Pick release. You go to pick. So it is going to do the pick release as well as pick confirmation, which you already seen on all the things. Right? The pick release and pick confirmation is done. So if you have enabled pick confirmation required on the inventory or parameters, it will be released to Arrows. Right. And then afterwards, we had to perform a manual pick confirm. Remember, now in this case, it is not so. I have not enabled it. So what happens? The pick release as well as the pick confirmation will be done together, actually. And we have already seen how to do during our inventory training, how to enable the pick confirmation required. So that what happens? The pick release is one step, and then it will be going to release to arrows. And then afterwards, once you perform a pick confirm, it will be going to stage. You now, fine. Now both the things are done 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 together. So if you go and then see on the transfer order, right? no pick. So you know you what happens? You go there. Uh, where is the way? Manage transfer, manage transfer orders. You go there. Give a done now. Fine. So nothing is shipped actually. Fine. Click on done now. Fine. Go back. And then again, what happens? You choose it now. Fine. Select it and then click on the view ship and so on. But again, it is not shipped. It is only staged actually. Fine. Now I ship. Now I am going to perform a shipping. Now. Fine. So let us not perform a shipping. So you now go there. One, two, three, four, five, fifth one. What happens? I am not going to perform. So click on the shipment lines. The shipment numbers are automatically created. Fine. Auto create. Not necessary. The system itself has created automatically. Fine. Click on it and then no perform a ship confirmation. So in the shipping area. <clears throat> pick release, pick confirmation, and ship confirmation are the three activities in here. The pick slip grouping rule and then the release sequence rule must be very proper as per the company policy. And then do it now. Fine. Click on ship confirmation by which the third activity of shipping we are not doing. It. Now it is getting shipped. Right. So it is now giving a warning message of the weight and volume. Nothing is done. This is required only for transportation management, and so it is not required. And remember, since it is not asked the shipping method at all, fine. Otherwise, what I am going to be saying, you have to provide the shipping method. Fine. If you had you given the shipping method as a mandatory of the shipping parameters, it will not ask in this place. Now it is not automatically populated. Otherwise, you have to populate there. So it is not shipped. Now the concurrent will be running for interfacing it to the what's called the uh, thing. The from the shipping to what happens is the source or zero zero two that it is shipped actually. You can go there and see the one one concurrent will be running. One of the tools it is called send shipment advice. You can go to this place and then have a look at the concurrent. So the concurrent will be running send shipment advice. This will now inform that it has been shipped from the zero zero two R. So the shipping execution is now interfacing it to your inventory R. Otherwise, what happens? It will be interfacing it to order entry. In this case, it is not going to interface the order entry. The send shipment advice has got succeeded. It has now informed the zero zero to all that I have shipped. Right? 
and then sometimes this concurrent doesn't work in the field at all fine for which whatever the workaround is what if it doesn't if it does what if it does properly what you will do is you will not go to the manage transfer orders you will not see the ship to quantity will be coming fine click on done now and then click on it and then go there and then click on you man ship on some reserves if you go on and have a look at it now the ship is coming so if this concurrent doesn't work in some cases even in the field also it doesn't work so what happens you have to force do it now fine right? so the interfacing from the shipping execution to the source the the, the demanding organization so in this case it is only 002 whereas for the sales order it will be communicating to sales say uh, order entry actually so click on it and then if it doesn't communicate what you do is you run the manage shipment interface manage shipment interface the super concurrent this will now automatically trigger all the what happens unsuccessful ssas whichever is ssa is not successful this is now going to trigger it and then make it complete now fine you know pass on the minimal parameter mode is what all and then the ship from organization you put it now fine in this case what happens is you will do it. this month you only do it the remaining not need at all right so do it and then if you submit it this will now do all the unsuccessful ssas and then it will now communicate back to the organization that is ship back right is a very important one and if you know it many companies are running this managed ship and interface on a periodic basis every 15 minutes it will be keep on running so that the unsuccessful ssas will be getting re triggered again and then it will be coming getting back to the source system second so in this case the source system is what inventory or whereas for the sales order it will be order entry actually you know that so we are able to see this also in the manage transfer orders we are able to see it not shipped now we have to go on the receive it actually so it is not shipped so once when you receive it if you go on and see in this place what happens goods available will be coming so we have to receive it on the 001 or we have to wait if you go on the refer sheet nothing will be there right now it is not a receipt it is only shipped from the source or so we have to go to the destination or then what about you have to receive it you have to receive it so click on it you know go to the page over there so we know go to the destination or go there so we know perform what about the receipt now so go to the inventory management and then we know change the organization 001 which is our destination or and click on it now over there so we going to wait so go to the what's called make it the inventory and then we go there go to the manage uh, go to the inventory and then uh, not inventory sorry go to receipts go to the receipts area and then click on the receive expected shipments and then it must be on 001 org we have to change the org now zero we can change org so we have to come back to 001 so there is a destination org 2 to 1 is our transfer now click on okay now so here we are going to receive what click on it now go to the place and then go to the receive expected shipments and then you will now receive it so we can query on multiple things but normally it is a customary to query only on the transfer org it is now starting on 1340 something 49 or something like that if you give off of it it will not tell you it is now coming so this will come when if you go to the manage transfer orders the receive expected shipment date has to come only when the date comes it will be coming fine for some places some people it will not be coming off fine so today is what if you go and see if you see that today's date now fine people late so today is 17 we are given 3 days time fine go there so it is now expected on 27th fine the 18th and 19th are holidays and so it is now saying that it has it will be expected on 22nd actually fine so the expected receipt date has come so this will come only when you define your transit times properly and then on the shipping parameters what happens do not enforce it fine these are all the things which are basically a bottleneck for getting the receipt expected right? so do it properly and then if the customer says enforce then what happens your carriers and transit times with the default shipping is a must actually the default one of the methods must be a default uh, on the transit times and then the the time taken for uh, reaching also must be available fine right? the transit time has to be specified otherwise multiple people are facing this problem they are not getting this so only when you get this in this place you will be able to find out the transfer order otherwise you will not be able to find it so it's a very important one so it is not shipped they are going to receive and deliver fine right? this is now closed the shipment is closed because it is already shipped fine right? 66165 is the shipment number it is now closed by dhl air it has been shipped right? and then we are going to make a receipt right? so we are going to receive right? you know perform a receipt right? so query on the transfer order number fine search now right? <clears throat> search and then it will show you this is no equipment then go on there fine select it and then click on receive Thank you, Mr. Singh. So we are going to perform the receipt, and then there they have mentioned what as a direct receipt. Right? If you go on and see on this page, you know, you know how we look at the or interop parameters. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Interop parameters. So go to the setup and maintenance, and then how we look at the interorganization parameters. So click on it. Go there. So click on search now. Right? Is the manage inter or para? So since they have made it as a direct, it is not showing. I uh, will not go on and check it. Fine, but this is zero zero two to zero zero one. I want to do it. You have to keep on searching. Go there. Let them go there. So tell them to keep on it. And remember, we are not even enabled the transfer order at all. This is only for the manual movement, and for automatic movement, it doesn't see. But it says this it picks up actually. The result routing is direct. So because of which 
when you are receiving it it now puts the inventory had it been what happens the standard it will not show the receiving section so this is one so this is one so manage interrupt fine so this is it is a picking but this it is ignoring actually this one it is ignoring actually never transfer for automatic it is always a transfer order so, so our system cannot create a interrupt transfer at all like interrupt transfers are only manual transfer orders are only automatic so the biggest advantage of a transfer order is what material get allocated and then you can very well print the shipping documents right? these are the two major advantages of a transfer order and then it is automatic also automatic route only transfer orders are visible so document printing as well as allocations are the biggest advantage of a transfer order and then the sales order will not do only transfer orders so that was so you know that it was a good place and there is no query time so like i had to mention the submit also because that direct delivery was that i will not mention all the submit is i know that 10 one is going to come but we'll not put 10 over here am i and then put the submit over here <clears throat> we can even click on the show receive content it'll be showing you now and remember the receiving parameter of the destination organization must be defined otherwise it will not get stuck somewhere but since i am working on vision vision is all fully set up 001's receiving parameters manage receiving parameter must be properly set when you are doing on your own or you are doing it your destination or the receiving parameter must be set otherwise what happens it will be failing somewhere i don't know where exactly you fail but there is why see working on vision is no real fun at all right is a very easy is a jujube one and it will all work actually even if you make a mistake it will work so go that click on create so once when you create a receipt what happens the gr number gets created the gr number will be created click on something now we'll not put the packing slip number shipping method and the number of packing units is four and then what happens the way bill number jinni chakma fine kacha mucha fine over that then appropriate notes this will be very useful for the management to what happens uh, track the particular gr right so by which what happens they will do further analysis on this right it is always preferable to fill up the maximum columns on this create receipt column no sorry so by which what happens everything will get created so we have got a receipt number over here now right the you know getting received and then delivered also received and delivered are in one go actually because of the direct result so what happens there? both of them will be getting updated on this so a gr number is going to be created like that so 51928 is a gr number okay now right you go to the manage transfer orders and then go there so the 51928 will be coming on there right? the received and delivered also right? click on the number right? it is on received and delivered you click on that and then come back and then click on again on view shipments result you can now see it is received and delivered and then 51928 receipt number is also there. so by which the activity of the transfer order is now fully complete moving it from second to one is now complete now the sales order will be saying goods available the sales order say awaiting supply what happens if you go on the make a sub fashion of a goods will be available for you the goods will be available for you so it says what awaiting supply again so we had to wait for some time what happens it is now received also it is not delivered so now what so it has to say goods available so it takes some time to what happens to communicate it is this communication is automatic we don't have to wait so awaiting supply so click on refresh now this communication is basically automatic so once when the goods are available we are in a position to ship it to the customers actually so you know that so we have now delivered it also into the inventory now so the transfer order activity is now fully complete man all fully complete by initial ship date and then somebody and then expected and then it is already arrived over here with the gr number so go there and then click on the refresh button now we are going to ship this part for the sales order 97388 we are going to ship it so go that you correct so awaiting supply i don't know why it is coming like for my test to get what are the goods available over So let us now ship and then see whether the item is available. Or not. I will now go to this place. This one, the okay, supply order. In the supply order, if we refresh it, it will not go further. We go there. We can now see that what happens. We go to the orchestration plan and then how will it be? You see, it is now transferred, reserved, and then interrupt shipment is also complete. Interrupt shipment. Go there. And then how will it be? Interrupt shipment. Interrupt shipment is done. Now put away is also complete. Now only fulfilling the customer's needs is a balance. Now fine, we have to fulfill it. So it is not saying here inventory available. So this also has to reflect on the sales order as what goods available. In the sales order also whatever it has to come as goods available. I come on, click on refresh. We will not see whether it is coming or not. Ina bar is not coming at all. So it has to go. It will be having also goods available. I don't know. Anything. Now we will not ship because our orchestration supply orchestration very clearly says that inventory is available for shipping actually to the customers. Right. The in process now, right? the transfer order still in process. We have to ship it to the customers. Everything is available. So let us now ship it now. Right? Let us now go to the manage shipments, and then here let us now come back to our organization. Change the organization to zero zero one. There is a destination or so. Let us go there. Zero zero one. Let us go there. Click on okay. Now. So we are going to do it. So we are now changing the art or our or the destination or let us now ship the product. Let us now go to this place, and then let us now go to what? Let us go there. Let us now go to the shipments now. Right? Click on shipments. Go to this place. Let us now go to the shipments, and then click on what? You are manage shipment lines and then query your sales order number. 
9738 is the sale normal. 97388. So some this what happens is expected only on 22nd. Now, fine. Sometimes today we have to ship means what? It may not be coming. It may not be coming. Now, fine. Such no, it may not come. So in which case, what happens? It is expected to ship to only on 22nd actually, as per the transfer order. You see, uh, expected result is 42nd, and then today is only 17th. Now, fine. So sometimes it may not come. In which case, what you do is you go there. And then if it is not coming, if you click on search, it's not coming. So what you do is you go there and then change it to what before and then make it as a month end lecture. Make it as a month end. Then it will not come. So whatever has to be shipped before, we are going to query on it. So that way you do it. So, that, so this time it will definitely come. Click on search no more. <coughs> For a transfer order, it's okay. That has been picked only today. That is coming. So here, if you make a before something, what happens is not coming. So here go there, go to actions and go to launch pick release. Click on pick release, we are going to launch it. So, you know, concurrent is not fine. So, the pick release as well as the pick confirmation will be done in one go, actually. It will be done in one go. You know that? You know that? You want it. I will give a save and close on this one. Save and close. And then you can also say it will be staged, actually. So, that staging is from 002 to 001. Now, this staging is from 001 to customer, actually. It will be getting staged. You know, got staged. You know, go on and ship confirmation. I click on it. You know, ship confirmation. You are not going to perform a ship confirmation. So go back, go to click on already the, the, the shipment number is coming fine for that. The shipping method is also coming automatically because it's a vision actually. Vision has got so many setups and sometimes what happens if you enforce the shipping method, this will be blank actually. And then when you ship confirm, it will not allow, accept at all. Even though on the line level, we have the shipping method here, but it asks for the shipping method at the header level also when you enforce the shipping method. Remember, some people will be enforcing a shipping method because it is going to cost money by air or by rail or by sea. It is very, very important for the end customer actually. So he has to optimize the transportation costs also. So they would have enabled the import shipping method. You may not go as per the default is there, fine. But only if the customer is paying good money, fine. You don't say, Are yaar, if you're paying good money, I will not send it by blue, blue dot. If you don't pay good money, I will not send only by a bullock card, fine. So that way they will not decide, fine. Because the transportation also is a significant expense, expense for the, what happens, the implementing company. So take on ship confirm, fine. That is a very important one for that thing. And then when you ship confirm, a lot of documents has to be printed. Fine. That portion is not really known to me. Fine. You try to learn what documents the company wanted to or as a print when you perform the ship confirmation. Both on the pick release as well as on the ship confirmation, we can print plenty of documents. Fine. There are certain requirements. Two of my students have already told, one girl and then one boy, they told the son, no, please, I have not learned that part. Fine. Do you please learn it and then do it now? Fine. The shipping documents, the printing, the pick confirm documents and ship confirmation documents is also important. You learn from somebody about how to choose those things and then they will be running out. If you go to the, what's called your uh, monitor process, you can also see those documents are running in vision. Vision running is really no meaning at all. Fine. Everything is fully set and go there. You will not run all this thing. Right? So is the ship confirmation documents is running. And similarly, the print confirmation, pick release documents over. The pick release and ship confirmation documents, you have to program it, remember, in the client's location. This and this, you have to program it. Right? So how to do it? If anybody has got a good document, please send it. And this will be interfacing it to what? Order entry. This will be interfacing it to order entry. Previously, the ship sent ship under the SSA was interfacing it to the source org itself. But here, it will be interfacing to order entry. From shipment to order entry, it will be interfacing. You know, right? So once it is run, what happens? Once it is completed, the sales order will not show us shipped. No. This place will be showing us the status will be going to ship. Actually. So wait for the concurrent company to find the place, and then we'll wait for the concurrent company. <coughs> the ship send ship under is now completed. Find that point. <coughs> will not refresh. Refer to the sales order. It has to come as what shipped. No, it is not shipped. Now, if you go on and see the orchestration plan. It is not shipped, and then the next activity on the orchestration plan will be triggered now. My invoice has to start. <coughs> invoice has started. <coughs> now, this data will be what happens uh, pushed into the interface tables of AR now, and then it will be going to awaiting very much. This data will be going into what? The, the this thing, and then it will be going to awaiting very much. So it's not started. So it will not take some time, and then it will not go to the awaiting. Now, the customer has received the product. Now he says that two of them are defective. Now he is going to return it. Now. So we will not go on that what? Perform our return on the return. Right? Click on the right? Click on the right? And then we're going to perform a return for this. So we are going to return the product from customer actually. And click on done and then come to the main line. Now. Come to the main line. So go to the main line. And then we are going to return it. So you can see the return is not enabled at all because item is not returnable actually. If it is a buy up am, banana, banana cannot be returned. Edible items cannot be returned because you may, uh, they will, if you sell it, what happens? You have to only take away and then go. So there are certain items which are not returnable. Right? So you will not be enabling the item at all. Now, if you want to do it, now what happens at this stage also you can do it. So the one, 
I will not take a phone one thing or another. So I will not go on and enable that one of its returnable attribute on the item on it. I'll go on and query it. So I am working on 001 org. In the 001 org, I am going to enable the return returnable. Fine. I am going to enable the return. Oh, it's not coming here. Go on and click on now. <clears throat> Go there. I will now go to what product management and then I go to the product information management and I'll query on the item on the child or 001. The returnable attribute has to be enabled. So I'm not very sure about whether the attribute is the OCA or MCA. So let me go there and then make a check. It is preferable to always check first on the child or and then afterwards go to the master. Because what happens if it is a OCA, if you make a change on the master, nothing will happen. Go to the browser and then it will query the item. And then it is the best practice to what query on the child or first and then if it is not so, then go to the master. Because my people have done a mistake. And then they say, sir, I have forgotten the OC, MC, fine. I changed the attribute. It is not reflecting at all. That is why they issue. So the zero one, fine. Right? So some three, four calls has come in the past two years. So click on it. And then you have to make a change on the return. Anybody has got any doubts? <clears throat> they can talk to me. Go there. I will not go to the specifications now. Fine, go there specifications. And then here, I will not go there and then see. Go to the specifications now. And then I will go to the sales and order management. And then I will see that returnable is enabled. Or so returnable is not enabled, it is grayed. That means what is the MCA, my master control enabled. So in that case, what happens is you have to go there and then change the master. Now. So give a cancel now. And I will now open up the master and then change it to returnable. Yes. Now. Cancel it. I will go there. I will now click on the master. Now. There is a top one of the master. Now. So click on it. And then you go there. And then we will now change the returnable to yes. Now. That will immediately reflect. Remember, this does not need any collections and refresh at all. Any item attribute change will be immediately be reflecting on the sales order. No collection and reference is required. And similarly, whenever on and changes also, no need to refresh. Right? The system will be sensing the change of the supply parameters. All the supply parameters previously we had to collect. Nowadays, it has been bypassed. And then any change in the supply need not be collected at all. Right? There is a resource change. There is an on and change. Like when there are so many things on the supplies area. Supplies need not be collected also. That, that change. And similarly, what happens? I also want the reference data also not to be collected. Fine. I'm waiting for that now. So here at least the reference start need not be collected from 21D onwards. Now that. So returnable, I'm now making as yes. The changes will come slowly. Returnable. Click on save and close. Now on the master, I've changed it. Now, if you re-query the sales order, you'll now find the returnable coming up automatically on this. No need to even restart the system actually. Sometimes what about the major changes, you have to sign out and sign in. So for this change, there is no need to do the sign out and sign in. So we are not changing enough. The system has now gone slow. You will not go on the whatever. So 97388 is the sales order number. Thank you for it. So the returnable is not right. Click on done and then come out of it. 97388, I'm going to find the returnable will be enabled. 97388. Click on search on the magnifier. You're going to search for it. You can search for it. Go there. Aya, one the We got it. And if there are multiple lines, you can even choose all the lines. There is one option. Return will come. So you select it and then click on return. I'm going to return it. You now going to return two products. Two of them are defective. You're not returning it. So return quantity. I now make a change to two. And then it's okay. And then return type is what? Either the canceled item or otherwise return product with no credit. Say for example, the item will be returned, but you will not give any credit to the customer at all. He has to pay the full amount. Or return for credit only. Say, for example, I have now sent, uh, sell, sold five quarters of AMC. So the customer says, I don't want one quarter of AMC, he's returning it. So that is, we cannot, it's not, not an inventory result at all. Right? It's a logical result, logical uh, item. And so that will be given, he will be given only a credit and then there will not be any inventory results. At all. So for logical items, you will not be having any inventory results. And then this is a normal option. Right? We will be returning it as well as I will not give a credit also. Right? A credit memo is credit. Your credit memo will now reduce the liability of the customer. Actually, I'm not choosing it. I will not see why he has returned it. You can put the appropriate. And then through the lookup, you can even populate all these things. And through the lookup, you can populate. You now say product is damaged. What is it? Click on create. So by which whatever it will be creating a return order for this one. Nine seven three eight eight. Click on create order. It will be creating a return order. We can even have a separate numbering sequence. Fine. That also can be done. So nine seven three eight eight is the original order for which whatever the return order will be referencing the nine seven three eight eight once when it gets created. It will be referencing it. You know, 9738. You can see the original order number 97388. And then if you give a save, what happens? You can also see this. So along with the taxes, right, it is $9 and 218 plus other taxes it is getting returned back. Fine, taxes also will be returned back. You know, 200 is, you know, it's 97389 is the return order. 
and then let us know submit it. If you go to this place, and then there is no need for us to what happens? Put any supply area at all. Supply need not be populated because it is all picking up from the main one. Right? The whole general. So yeah, it is now referencing this order. Right? If you go to this place, the main one. You can see the reference is there. So no need to populate the supply at all. Right? Original order management. No, sorry. So 97389 is the return order. Is that? Return order. Is the 97389 is the return order. So return order. Fine. Book it. Fine. No, sorry. So the nine nine is the nine is the sale price actually the nine is the sale price. So but he will be getting eighteen plus uh, the taxes also will be returned back. Whatever taxes he collect, everything will be returned. So he'll go and then submit it. So nine seven three eight nine is no submitted. So the return order is now getting submitted. Now it will be getting interface to what the three eighteen is the what else? So it will. So here we can go there and then see what are the actions and then go to switch to fill menu. They're going to have it. Switch to fill menu. We're going to wait up and what. So you know, go to the fulfillment lines, not the fulfillment line, but you go to the returns line. Right? You to, so in the fulfillment line, anything will be visible. You click on the returns tab region and then go and then find out the do number now. Return tab region, you go to it. <coughs> so click on the do number now, find out the do will be firing it. There's a distributed order orchestration number, right? Is now return receipt is now started. Find out that. You know that. Find, click on the refresh number. You know, started. Find out that. And no started. And remember, for returning it, the receiving parameter must be set, otherwise, it will be throwing an error. But since I am working on a vision, no errors will be done. So, somebody has even uh, created a custom do for asset return, actually. Right? It doesn't matter. Right? So, ours will not be affected because he must have uh, changed it only for the asset part, only you might have changed it. The remaining part, he might have kept assets. Not right? And then I have told you about how to bring the generic do. Right? That also has taught to you. Fine. That will be okay, fine. So click on it. It has started. It has to go as what? Awaiting return. Match. So click on refresh on. You're going to await it later. So three seven uh, nine seven three eight nine is a return order now. Fine. So it has to show me as what? Awaiting return. Now. So it is now awaiting receiving. You know what it is. So let us now receive the nine seven three eight nine. Fine. You know what the browser is This is now complete. Fine. You know that. You will now receive it in the inventory. So click on the home icon and then you go to the supply chain execution now. Go to the supply chain execution, and then you go to the supply chain execution, and then here we go to the what's called inventory management, and then we will now perform RMA return. Actually, this is called return material authorization. Now, find that one, and then you go to the what's called you go to the receipts now, and then click on the receive expected shipments. This is on the 001 or the 001. Order. So, the RMA number is what 97389. If you give a tap 97 and the half of it, if you give a tap, that's what you know coming. RMA number is the return sales order number. Return material authorization now. And two quantities are getting returned. They're getting returned. Like Select it and then you go to receive it. The receipt routing, depending upon the manager, receiving parameters. The receiving parameters, whatever receipt routing you have done, that will be coming up. So there is now going to the standard receipt. So there is a RMA receipt is a standard one. That's why it's coming. And then if you click on the show receipt logo, otherwise you can even manually show receipt on it. So how much is expected from supplier actually? And then who has done it? The warehouse operator will be putting it on. I'm not doing everything from one login itself. But it will be a different, different logging group. And if you, you have to simulate it on a what's called on a conference room piloting, you have to simulate from different, different locations on different, different people. Find the same location will be doing it. Right? So <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the conference room piloting, CRP test, you will be making it at the time. What happens? You have to simulate each and every business process and then show it to the customers. So click on create result. Go over there. <clears throat> go there. And then click on submit now. So by which the return gets created, actually. The return is getting it. So 51929 is a GRM number. Now, now, the system will not go to what delivered now. It is not delivered. So we have to run the concurrent. Whereas for shipping, the send shipment advice runs automatically and then it interfaces the <coughs> what's called your shipping execution to order entry automatically. Whereas for return, it is not so. We only have to manually push it into order entry actually. <coughs> so for which you go there, you will not run the concurrent. Now. It's called send receipt confirmation. <coughs> send receipt. R E C I P T. Send receipt confirmation. We have to run it manually. Only for RMA, we have to run it. Remember, for shipping, no need to run anything manually. The send shipment advice, SSA will be running automatically. Whereas for returns, we have to run it manually. Organization is what? 001. And then source system, drop it down. So that, and then you have to choose the system, right? Choose the do now. Right? So choose the order. Uh, what happens here? Uh, order fusion. Oracle fusion, order, order orchestration and planning. That is the source system. And then remaining leave it blank. We don't know leave it blank. You know who do it for all the receipts. Right? All the RMA receipts will do. 
But if you know the results, you can do it. Otherwise, submit. It will not do all the RMA results. It will be interfacing the appropriate sales orders. You have to wait for the contract to complete now. So once it is done, now the system will be saying it is delivered now. But so now the sent receipt confirmation is already for running. It is not going to run now. Ready? It is not running. So it's not running. So once when it is completed, you can now see in the sales order, whatever it will be delivered. I am not remembering the exact state of the contract. It may be delivered. I'm not sure about it. So it's not waiting. Is doing so. Let the concurrent complete now. Thank you. Afterwards, the invoice process will not begin now. We have to create a credit now. Also. So we have to create a credit. Now. So, go ahead, go ahead. so since the numbers are next to next, we can even run the order invoice for these two sales orders. Actually. One is a normal sales order. One is a return sales order. Now it's received actually, it's not delivered actually, it's not received. Now the invoice will now begin. I click on refresh now, it's now received. Received in the inventory, fine. Okay. So now the next process will be running, it will be creating it, and then it will be going to awaiting billing. So the previous sales order also is not awaiting billing, and then this sales order will be going to awaiting billing. So we will now receive, we will now go down, and then we will now query 97388, we will now query now. That to awaiting billing. It has put the invoice process has started now, and we are going to awaiting billing. So, 97388 is the one, and then go and query. So, the last concurrent on the last phase, whatever you know about that, you know, go to abiding billing. So, you go to the actions, and then you go to the switch to fulfillment view, and then look at the orchestration process. You go to the, place, you go to the fulfillment lines, and then have a look at the orchestration process. So, go there, click on it. You know, click on the orchestration process on this one. There's a do number here. It's here. Click on it. You know, have a look at it. So, the invoicing activity is also completed. You go to the orchestration process, whatever. Invoicing activity is also complete. It has now gone to awaiting billing. There's no push into the interface tables of AI. <coughs> now we have to bring it to the base tables. And then if you go to the managed supply lines and then give it what happens, now give us a fresh Now it will have got fulfilled actually. <coughs> Fulfillment is completed because we have shipped to the customer now. <coughs> it is fulfilled actually. But he is returning back. That is a different thing. And then collection of payment is also a different one. Fine with that. But shipping from a sales orders perspective, what happens? It is now completed. So the supply chain orchestration now got fulfilled also. The line is also closed because the ESCO process, SEO, SEO is now got completed because it has to what? Fulfill it now. <clears throat> so it has to wait now. So it has to make the item available in the distance of and then it has to, what happens, do this also. Fulfillment. So the, all the activities on this now done. If you go to the execution documents, it will also show all the execution documents on the way. The receipt number is also showing over here now. Each and everything, the shipment document, the receipt number, fine. Is the inventory available, fine. Everything is not shown over here now. All this information over here. So if you go to the manager orders, fine, go that not in order. We'll now go on and query the 97389. There also the invoice process will be going to awaiting billing. Just click on the now. Click on done and then come out of it. 97389. We're going to query it up. 97389 is a RMA, right? Is a credit memo actually. Yeah, credit memo will now reduce the liability of the customer actually. It is not received, it is not showing you. Uh, 389 is not received. Uh, and then it has to go to awaiting billing also. I don't know why it's not going to awaiting billing. Also. It is not received. And go to the actions and then go to the switch to fulfill view. It has to go to awaiting billing. Also. Don't go there. You're showing as received on the way. You go to the returns <clears throat> and then you know look at the orchestration plan. Open orchestration number, do orchestration number. Then how it? it is invoice is not started. I don't know why it's not started. It has to start there. There's no received, and then tick mark has to come. Maybe some setups on the uh, RMA is not done on the uh, AR side, I think, probably. On the AR side, it is not done. So something is missing, actually. Right? I'm not very sure what, what you're doing. When you're doing a rapid implementation, it's just the AR also properly. Right? The AR is also done properly. So there may be some problem on the RMA side. Right? The credit memo setups is not done properly. So that is why invoice process is not started. Now, at least on the sales order line, what happens? We'll not push it. Another, you know, there was a place. You go to the monitor also, and then we'll not push it into the what is called AR. So I'll go there. I will now run what? Uh, import order. So right? import order invoice. Give it an import order invoice. It is now going to bring in from the interface table to the base table switch. So I want it. Organization is what? 001. And then logistics and export. So it is the, oh, no, sorry. You can see something else is running. So click on the submit new process. So import order invoice. Or otherwise, it's the auto invoice import. I don't know. I don't know in the concurrent name. Import. 
ஆட்டோமேட்டிக்கலிஸ்ட்ரேஷன் <laughs> And then, since only one sales order is eligible, I will not put only that sales order. Right? From sales order number what? 97, right? it is a 388. So here also the same number, and not 9. So you see this number, right? the return order is not gone to the uh, interface tables at all because of some issues. So this only will not import and then have a look at it. 9, 7, 3, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8
percentage close percentage will get up update close sales or right update close sales will get up update close sales will get up you know when close it up so header is going to close it up you know say header remember the first letter is a capital one right? it's a very sensitive one and if you give a small letter you want to and then go there after how many hours you want to close if you want to immediately close one of them make it as zero interval for every four hours it will be running fine zero means what immediately now it will be running so once when this concurrent completes what happens the header also will be closed so he has to close the lines as well as headers also in one of the companies in the evening they will be what happens they discussing with the, about how many lines he has closed on that day <coughs> and how many lines are not closed so for which he will not give a reasoning sir it is in manufacturing or it is not coming from bombay on the way to madras likewise what happens he will not give an explanation to the management actually. the top management will be basically communicating with the scsrs actually because they are the breadwinner now and they are bringing the revenue actually <coughs> Go that you want, and then, you know if you click on refresh, the header also will be closed. The header will be closed. It's closed. My lines are closed. Only when after all the lines are closed, then only you can close the header. Otherwise, it's not possible. <coughs> now we'll now go to this place. Uh, where is it? Uh, receive not this one. You are in which place here? It was in some place. So manage supply lines. It's okay. It's okay. You are managing transfer orders, manage shipments. Come on, yeah. I don't know where exactly. It is. So go that you want. Now we will now go to what? So now go to the receiving. Now go to the receiving. Receivables basically. Receivables billing. I click on the home icon, and then you now go to the receivables billing. Then there you now see the invoice number. So the invoice has got six lines. You now go there. Go to the receivables, and then you go to the billing area. So receivables and billing. So we have already done the receipt also through the accounts receivables. We have performed the receipt, and then we have now pushed it to the GL. And then we have taken a trial balance also. Remember, and everything has been completed. So that tax is also you do it, and then this also can do it. Up to trial balance, I have shown you. So here, what happens? You go to the manage transactions. Now, right? click on the manage transactions, and then here you go to. The and then reference number is what nine seven three eight eight is the one. And then the bill to customer is what company service. So what are the double star? One of them is mandatory, and then this is now going to bring you the invoice of only this particular sales order. Now, right? Click on sales. There will be multiple sales orders. Now we are going to search only for this. So once when you search for it, you can see the ninety plus eight point three two is the taxes actually. <coughs> it is showing you six lines from there. Click on the hyperlink on the transaction number, and then go ahead and then see this now. Go down, go down, go down, go down. It is a minus ten. It is a discount. Here, now find discount has come. Uh, uh, a discount has been given. Now find the if the return is also processed. What about you? Can you see the credit number also? And then where to see the taxes here? Taxes is not visible here. Go to see the taxes now. Ah, here it is not showing you. Tax is eight point three two, but the tax details where is it? Right? Go to the sales credit. This will be the customers or even the sales officers, the CSR sales credit actually. That is not configured. So if you configure it, it will be coming up. They are be doing it actually. So eight point three two. Ah, here there is a hyperlink. If I click on the hyperlink on the tax, we can also see it. Here. So click on the hyperlink. Oh, this many lines are. That is why what happens one point on point two two point. So on the what is called this one, the discounts also something something is coming. Is all basically US taxes. <coughs> State and county taxes are getting applied on the main hundred numbers and then on the discount also it is getting applied. There are four lines of that. It is showing you six lines. I don't know why it's so fine. So, so the US taxes actually. So one is what the state level tax and then county level tax. Fine. State, county, and city are the three levels of taxes in US actually. Fine. That is not showing you this much. So this completes a complete. What happens? You have transfer, receive, and then ship, including up to A R invoice. And that's it. Fine. Any other doubts? You know, <clears throat> it's a big process. So what you do is you first of all work on my item only, and then see whether you're able to complete it or not. Right? First of all, you work on the government now, then go back to it, and then do it now. I will not stop this. Vikram, are you clear on this now? <clears throat> Yes, sir. Very good, right? If you are all clear upon this concept, can you give a green tick? Somebody who has fully understood, fine, go there, sir. Please, as understood. Excellent, fine. All of you have understood it. Now you have to test only on your item, and then afterwards only you have to perform the setups of the complete GOP now. So we are going to Subham. Subham can understand it now. He is not putting a tick mark. So it is now eleven o'clock now, fine. Uh, now I will not take a, what's called a feedback from you. We can start the next session at twelve o'clock or one o'clock or two o'clock. 
So 12, 1, 2 are the three choices available. Anyhow, you are having a meeting from 2 to 3, it will be only 3 now, fine. So either 12 or 1 or 3, fine. Can you put a feedback on this now, fine? 12, 1, 3 are the three. Fine, you have a feedback session at 2, 2, 30, 2 to 2, 30. So attend that session, uh, okay, fine. And afterwards, we will not start now. Tell me your time now. <coughs> 12 or 1 or 3. 12, 1, 3 are the three options available for you now. You know, see, 3, 3, 3, 3. Oh, God, I know that. <laughs> this is what is going to come now. <laughs> okay. But practice, this is a very important concept. You have to configure the transfer orders for very many items. Remember, it's not an easy concept at all. I mean, it's a laborious one. I don't say it's a difficult one, but it's a laborious one. And then note down, I'm speaking a lot. I have spoken a lot, and then whatever I spoke, please take a note of it. That will be very handy for you whenever you're going to work out. So, good then. Bye for now. And then uh, we are now having four hours of solid time. Right? 11 o'clock and then 3 o'clock, we're going to meet because you have a meeting at 2 o'clock. So, we will now meet at 3 o'clock. So, try to try to what happens at least do on my item on this one. Good then. I will now say bye to you all of you. Right? We'll now meet at 3 o'clock. Okay, Can you say bye? Class will be uploaded. Huh? Upload of class, sir. This will be uploaded. Once I go ahead, oh. okay. uh, no. nice, sir. Bye, bye. Bye, I will sir. be uploading it. Bye, bye sir. Bye, okay. sir. Bye. bye. Supreme and Samadhi, we are waiting for your uh, what's called your answer sheets no, fine, for the examination answer sheets are expected. No, fine. So please, sir. Subham, Supreme, and then one more Rahul was also not. Sir, I sent, I sent you, sir. Ah, Supreme Kumar, yeah, yeah. You are Rahul Kumar, I got it. You are Rahul Kumar or Supreme Kumar? Sir, Subham Kumar, sir. Subham Kumar, when you have said it now? Uh, I will... Sir, in the morning, sir, today okay. morning. I will now, I will now make a check up. Okay, okay, so. I will send within half an hour, sir. Okay, okay, very good, very good. Because only when your management asks for it, only when the PwC management is asking for it, I will now send you as a sheet, sir. Otherwise, I will not send it. It all depends upon what they want. Nowadays, they are saying that uh, my people have to be what happens, uh, confident in uh, doing the setups independently. Even though you're going to be placed only as a shadow resource immediately, but uh, they want your they want to see your confidence level also to handle the projects independently. Actually, right? So PwC is now very much insisting upon it now. So be ready. Right? You may be even pushed into what happens, uh, mainstream straight away. Now, right? Good then, fine. We'll meet at 3 o'clock. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. Bye, sir. Bye.